Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Self Consciousness Podcast. I am your host, Jennifer Way. Uh, today's episode, I obviously needed to start off with uh, the song Typical Girls by The Slits because apparently I'm a radio DJ as well. It's appropriate, trust me. I want to thank you so much for being here today. You have a lot of options out there, so I am truly grateful that you have chosen to listen to this creation. In the weeks that I've gone without putting out an episode, I had kind of committed to myself to put out one each week, and that's kind of falling a little to the wayside, so be it. Um, But I was incredibly honored to be a guest on Andy Murphy's Cosmic Mama podcast last week. Um, So please check that out. The link is down in the uh, show notes. Um, We talked a lot about like needing our friends during this time just to like help us through among many other things. Um, I also had the pleasure of being on my friend Choi Ying's Yes podcast. Again, another link down down in the show notes. So hopefully those episodes count towards my goal of 52 this year. Um, Andy had put out, and also if you haven't heard our episode with Andy, it is episode number nine. So go ahead and make sure to listen to that as well. Um, she just put out a beautiful episode on the Cosmic Mama podcast last this past weekend um, and talked about beliefs. Um, it's pretty huge. Uh, she really hit on something here. Pretty much every aspect of who we are and what we do has to do with the beliefs that we hold. These are the beliefs we hold about ourselves. These are the beliefs about the world, other people, so on. So I encourage you to tune into that episode of hers. It's episode number 40. It's called Sovereignty Upgrade slash Blessings of COVID. So hopefully um, you have listened to my previous episode called Mother Part 1. Um, part 2 has like been lingering for a little while. Um, but I wanted on this episode to go a little bit deeper into this conceptual idea of the Great Mother in today's context of dying, violent masculine and the transmutation of wounded feminine and wounded masculine into the divine blueprints. These essential energies are always complementary in nature. Um, This is the only way that balance is achieved. This is all about moving this energy through its process And the only way we do this is internally. Um, As with most of the work that I put out there, this is not an academic declaration or analysis of any kind. I will not be referring to the great mother as a studied archetype. Um, But I'm not, again, I'm not opposed to the academic discussions on all of these things. And I'll explain. I'm actually going to be having um, an episode coming up soon, uh, where I discuss with an actual academic. <laughs> so there, it'll it'll soothe that part of you that feels weird without any authority. Um, I wanted to explain why I'm not going to re- be referring to any of this in sort of like study and analysis. Because the majority of the studies and great authors of the last 3,000 years have been men. As a modern Western society, we have been so heavily influenced by ancient Greece and its ancient authors and storytellers and philosophers. So that means every perspective, every analysis that has been done has been through a very particular lens. As we know, our lens is influenced by really like the density of the consciousness of the time and We simply cannot deny the fact that masculine has been the favored energy during this time. Favored. Valued. Thought of as authority. Um, And right now I am... Hey, Dad. I'm talking to you right now. (laughs) I don't mean we should be blaming the world's problems on men. Okay? I love you. I love you, Dad. Um... 
To be clear, especially as the mother of a male-born human, this is not about male hatred. This is about recognizing and accepting that the world has been largely, mostly commanded by patriarchal values, systems, and customs. We know the impact of the Western world, right, on, the, on everyone else. We live it. It's the stew we are cooking in. We've absorbed all of its juices. We all hold internalized patriarchy within us. So healing divine masculine is everyone's job. Obviously, I'm looking at you women. But the only healing that you are responsible for is your own. Don't forget that. Is your internal masculine is most likely wounded. Imagine being born a woman into this world, if you're not already, into this world and internalizing that patriarchy. So you're not only experiencing it externally, but internally as well. We're still holding on to all this junk, man. A couple of years ago, I wrote an article about motherhood. I found that I needed to make other mothers under... I mean, I... I felt like I needed to make other mothers understand just how incredibly powerful they were. At the time, I felt like I needed to explain it in a way that would make an impact because at the time, my audience was essentially like muggles. So non-spiritual, even non-feminist women. These were women who merely aligned with being a mother. And that was it. Um, So the context there really was just duty. Um... And also in my experience, I just felt I felt like women resisted being called feminists and really bought into this belief, here we are with beliefs again, that being coupled or becoming a mother was what we were supposed to do. And yes, you can feel a true innate desire to be a mother, but also, or I should say, and also, be influenced by what the world expects of you. And as a woman, we're born into a society that pits us against one another. So we become conditioned to compete for, and I'm quoting, limited resources, right? You know what I'm talking about? All the good ones are taken, right? I'm sure you've heard that. When I was growing up, my grandmother and my mother always said, and this is really weird, but they always said, the perfect man hasn't been born yet and his mother is dead. Yeah. So in the grand stage of our own objectification, we actually learn how to objectify our future partners or husbands. In any case, here's a little bit from that article. As an intuitive coach and empath, I am constantly feeling into the energy around me as well as observing my own reaction to what I sense. This was obviously back in the days when I called myself a coach. Um, A couple of months ago, I was discussing motherhood with some friends and was struck by the realization that the dominant energy we were holding was insecurity. We had all felt so insecure in our choices, our bodies, and especially our ability to be a good mother, a good wife, good worker. When I had my first child 12 years ago now, I was overwhelmed with the amount of information out there. Looking back, I observed the underlying message behind the suggestions and friendly advice to be, you don't know how to do this. Clearly, I needed to try certain methods, parenting philosophies, or products in order to be a successful mother. And if I didn't, I simply would not be good enough. Society tells women and mothers how they should and shouldn't be. That they are incapable of figuring it out on their own and they should always consult an external authority. This can reinforce an internal sense of insecurity by creating an environment of constant external messaging, most of it marketing, A separation is created between our natural maternal intuition and the aspirational image of an ideal American mother. It's no surprise we feel disempowered. 
Despite recent gains, we are still painfully underrepresented in governing bodies, corporate boards, and sea levels around the globe. Obviously, things have gotten much worse since I wrote this. In America, we have one of the worst maternity leave policies in the world. As women, we've been underestimated, objectified, assaulted, and abused. Even worse, we have internalized a misogynistic perspective and often apply it to our reality without awareness. Here is where I go into uh, the definitions of masculine and feminine. Um, we are currently overwhelmed with masculine characteristics or traits. Uh, and I've already explained this on the other podcast. So if you want to really, you want a reminder of what that is, what the values are, what the sort of characteristics are of divine feminine and divine masculine, you can just go ahead and listen to my last podcast, Mother Part One. I don't like to go into the shadow aspect of all this because I don't want to focus on explaining to you guys. Now, this is not in the article. I don't want to go into explaining what wounded is, what the shadow side is, what the dark part is of masculine and feminine, because we are living it. We, You know what it is. I don't need to explain it. It's time to focus on what the divine aspects are. So the good news is, back to the article, the good news is divine feminine energy is rising back up. It is inevitable in our evolution and for our survival. Part of stepping into your power is finding true appreciation for these qualities within yourself. Sensitivity, emotion, heart, hormonal cycles. Without all of this, we would not be able to be mothers. It's time to bring the soft. We can choose to value all of these aspects inside ourselves and other women. We can live our lives in gratitude for all that is maternal and feminine. We don't have to listen to those external opinions anymore. They simply don't matter. Here's where I try to kind of draw people in. Not quite sold? Let's get woo-woo. You may have your own personal religious or spiritual beliefs, but in general, would you agree that we have a soul that continues after we die? Would it be safe to say you might believe that we were in spirit form before incarnating into this body? The scientific world has accepted the existence of multiple dimensions. Isn't it possible that souls exist in these other dimensions beyond our 3D reality? If you're not spiritual or into science fiction, I know this might be difficult to relate to or even accept, but what if I told you a huge part of feminine receptive energy is actually being sensitive to these subtle energies? I know this, it's funny reading this now, I know this is a bit far-fetched, but stay with me. If different dimensions exist, and we might be able to access them when we die, how did our soul get to Earth in the first place? Traveling from one dimension to another would require some kind of portal or entry point. The only entry point for human life on this planet is you. You are literally a portal. Your body connects consciousness and brings spirit into 3D reality and bodily form. Sit with that for a second. I'm going to pause and let you sit with that for a second. Just kidding. You hold enormous power. It is immeasurable. You hold space. You contain a universe of feeling, love, and care. You bring human life into this world. Never forget who you are and how divinity speaks through you. Swim in your emotions and cycles. Embrace your sensitivity. You are more than what you've been led to believe. Remember your power and resonate in this frequency of divine recognition. Trust and value yourself. Your light will shine brighter and you will step into your power. It's time to run the world. I don't love the end of that, but that was it. I don't love the end of it because I don't love... I like the idea of that song by Beyonce, but I just hate that she's using the word, the word girls. Can, I, and I know it rhymes with world... But can we just use women from now on? Why do we not recognize this sacred act of creation and the importance of the mother? 
It has been so heavily layered by beliefs on top of other beliefs until it becomes all twisted into like a huge knot. And it's a knot that we try to untie with the mind through thought and analysis. Analysis in and of itself is an inherently masculine value. We look at motherhood or even the divine feminine through the mind. We put down or make fun of feelings, stillness, motherhood. The degree to which we devalue mothers is just really uh, very difficult to get over. Of course, we've made a lot of progress. I mean, on social media, we have like all the mental health memes one could ever ask for. But Divine Feminine and the Great Mother is about experiencing, not in thought, but in heart. Not studying ancient texts or looking to history, but in feeling, sensing, and being. And in order to freaking destroy these beliefs, you have to trust yourself, trust those feelings, trust your sensations, trust your being. Last weekend, I went on a solo location and stayed near the seaport in New York City. Um, I woke up early one of those mornings to watch the sunrise over the Brooklyn Bridge because I just love to romance myself. Um, And as I looked into the water, I was reminded for whatever reason of the movie Splash from the 80s. So, of course, as people like me do, I was like, let's analyze, (laughs) right? Everything I just said that I shouldn't do. But it wasn't really an analysis. It was an emotional review. So I went a little bit deeper into my memory, that programming of what it meant to be a woman or a man in my childhood through fairy tales, movies, and television. I remembered feeling such a tie to that movie and to mermaids. I mean, like, now I can see it as another, like, 80s indoctrination of that male gaze fantasy or constant sexualization of women. But for some reason, this one really got to me for a sec. Um, And it started me to really, like, on a path of really kind of, like, exploring these feelings. As a person growing up in America, I was so confused about what it meant being a woman Being sexualized and like seeing those images from like such a young age, I was so confused about myself. I couldn't identify with assuming this role of the sexy woman or even just the plain woman. These seemed, honestly, they seemed to be the only options. These were like the only images shown to me. Mostly it was the sexy woman. I knew that there was so much more to me than just being that. Being there for a purpose or for a need. More than just being a pillow for a man's comfort. I was confused about whether all of these other sort of weird parts of me were real. The parts that didn't fit into the categories I saw being established and reflected around me. I mean, I I guess I knew that those parts of me were real, but I definitely learned that they weren't valued. In my case, I was like well-schooled on what experience and perspective was through a man's lens. I didn't really understand the difference. And while it can be said that women have plenty of like work, whether it's scientific discoveries or written works or art even, you know, in history, etc., etc., out there, these creations were all made with patriarchal architecture. When people say to me now, 
or let's say like they ask me kind of about movies or books or certain things to study or even art I've found myself in the last five years or so just being like nope I, I don't I don't take in male perspective anymore I just don't because and and people were really surprised or confused or accusatory <laughs> such a feminist um you know like I I just I was done with hearing and seeing and reading from the male perspective I now I'm in a place where I literally only pick movies that are directed by or written by women if they're not there's got to be at least some women in the higher positions of make uh, creatively so if it's a co-writer and not the director that's fine I need female creation, authentic and true female creation, female expressions of experience. I need to see representations of all those other parts of myself. So now I make sure to do that for my kids. Being the mother of both a girl and a boy, at least that's what they were born into. Um, seeing how they receive and internalize these messages. Because it's, it, it, you know, and, and trying my hardest to really prevent them from seeing most of mainstream media. Which I have to say I've done a pretty good job of. Doesn't really help though, because they're still involved with activities with other kids, school especially. Who filled them in? It was really important to me that my kids could see themselves reflected back and that they could also see the myriad options out there of who they can be, what they can explore, and what they can try out. This is how I am trying to be a great mother. of divine feminine I found the source of love the source emits through me unearthing this source required years of internal exploration and very importantly forgiveness it was a long process of letting go of beliefs about men and women Beliefs about sex and my own sexuality. Beliefs about motherhood and fatherhood. For me, the road to balance must begin with Isis. Alana Fairchild is a spiritual teacher, singer, and oracle card creator. Um, her deck, the Isis Oracle, is a beautiful tool if you are looking to start embracing your internal divine feminine. The ritual you're about to hear comes from this deck. It's written by Alana Fairchild. At this point in the podcast, I would like you to just kind of stop <laughs> because I'm going to take you through a ritual and I don't want you to attempt this kind of energy work if you're driving or operating heavy machinery um, so pause here and pick it up later when you can be alone in a private quiet place you might like to light a candle or do this in a softly lit room uh, without Ideally without strong sunlight or in absolute darkness. Rest quietly in a space where you will not be disturbed, preferably sitting or lying with your spine relatively straight, 
and close your eyes or rest them lightly half open with the sense of gazing inwards and having soft focus as your eyes gaze slightly downwards and in front of you. Visualize or sense that within your heart there is a beautiful golden light that extends until it becomes an endless field of golden grain, wafting lightly in the breeze under a clear blue sky. The grain is almost ready to harvest, and the light seems sun-kissed and golden. There is warmth and a pleasant, earthy scent in the air and warmth on your skin that is neither too hot nor too cool. You can sense yourself walking or resting amongst the golden fields of grain, feeling the bounty, peace, and life. You become aware of a golden woman gazing down at you from the sky. Her dress is the grain. Her hands are the winds, gently caressing your face and hair, and her eyes are the sun and the moon. You feel great love. Imagine in that state of connection with the mother of life. You can breathe in deeply and breathe out and release through your breath any fear, doubt, or attachment, even any of your history that would prevent you from really opening up to live more fully into all parts of your being now. Your body, your sexuality, your spirituality, your creativity, your intuitive and inspirational mind, and so on. Just breathe in and let go as you breathe out. Imagine the gentle breeze of the mother of life sweeping away that which you release and replenishing you with her unconditional love. When you are ready, just open your eyes fully and breathe in and out, being aware of your body and coming completely back into the present moment. I hope that that was illuminating for you. (laughs) I do this process quite a bit. And a lot of times, just once I've done it a couple of times, I'm able to really recall that sort of golden woman. Um, And I do feel her embrace. And um, it's very activating when it comes to the divine feminine. Just the act of putting the time aside and focusing on receiving all that nourishment is an act of divine feminine. And the more you do it, the more you infuse divine feminine into your life. I wanted to wrap up today's episode with a little teensy bit of an energy update. The energy I feel right now, currently, today is actually the full moon, um, but the energy I feel currently is a lot of breaking up and clearing out. The breaking up and clearing out of any manifestations in life that simply cannot support or exist in your higher frequency. We are experiencing death all around us. But if there is something that can make space for death, that can hold and cradle it, soothe the wound and heal the heart, nourish into life once again, it is the divine feminine. 
The Great Mother is in all of us and is in everything. She's dark because she is a womb. The dark, angry, and violent representations of feminine throughout history manifested through a masculine lens, through a masculine perspective, through thought and fear of death. But everything is created and reborn through the portal of mother. Sometimes you 